Hello everyone, welcome back. The topic is retention and relapse from orthodontics. Now what do you mean by relapse? So relapse, it is defined as the loss of any correction which is achieved by the orthodontic treatment. Now if there is any malocclusion which is present, now over here there is the crowding which is present. So now you are correcting this type of malocclusion with the help of this orthodontic treatment. Now as soon you remove your braces, so there are chances now your teeth, it will go back to its normal position that was just malocclusion. So now that becomes your relapse. That means it is the loss of any correction. So now you have done the correction of your malocclusion. So now that correction, it is lost. So that becomes your relapse. So to prevent this relapse, what you do is you give that retainer so these are your retainers so retainers are like they are divided into permanent and temporary so about retainers i've already covered in a video of retainers in orthodontics which i'm going to link them down in the in the description box so that you can see what exactly these retainers are so to prevent this relapse what you do is you give this retainer so that you are like maintaining that newly moved position of the teeth now what are the causes of relapse? So the first cause is periodontal ligament traction. Now when you are moving the teeth orthodontically, so what happens is there is stretching of the periodontal principal fibers and the gingival fibers which are encircling the teeth. Now over here the teeth it is encircled by various fibers that are your periodontal ligament fibers and the gingival fibers. So when you are moving the teeth orthodontically, so these fibers they get stretched. Now this stretch fibers they can contract and that can lead to relapse of your orthodontic treatment. So now various studies they have shown that your periodontal fibers they like organize or they reorganize in four weeks whereas the gingival fibers they take around 40 weeks to reorganize so because of that what you do is after the orthodontic treatment you give around four to five months of the retention full-time retention to the patient to prevent this type of relapse now the next cause is due to growth related factors now if there are patients with the skeletal problems which are associated with class 2 class 3 open bite or deep bite like malocclusion so what happens in them is if there is abnormal like continued abnormal growth pattern even after the orthodontic treatment so because of that there are chances that the case it will get relapsed because there is like continuous growth so you have to see that whenever you're giving the retention in such cases you have to give the retention till the active growth phase is completed now the next like cause for your relapse is bone adaptation now when the teeth they are moved so because of that the teeth which are moved they are surrounded by a lightly calcified osteoid bone now this lightly calcified osteoid bone it cannot give that proper stabilization to the teeth and because of that it can lead to relapse of the teeth. The fourth reason for the relapse is the muscular forces. Now your teeth they are encapsulated in all directions by the muscles. Now as your teeth they are covered all over by the muscles. So if there is any muscular imbalance at the end of the orthodontic therapy so that will lead to a relapse. Now the next is the persistent etiology. Now for example if the patient they are having any parafunctional habits like grinding, clenching or thumb sucking like any parafunctional habit and if that habit it is not eliminated at the end of your like treatment so now because of that like parafunctional habit orthodontic treatment was required because there was malocclusion which was present now if the cause of the malocclusion it is not eliminated so because of that obviously it will lead to relapse so you have to see that whenever the orthodontic treatment it is getting over so that treat or that parafunctional habit it should also be eliminated completely now the next cause is role of the third molars. Now in this, if the third molars, they erupt after the orthodontic treatment. So because of that, they exert pressure on the teeth and that can lead to the anterior crowding because now your posterior, now your molars, they are present posteriorly. So they are going to exert pressure anterior and because of that, there is like anterior crowding which is going to occur. And because of that, this leads to relapse. So these are the various causes of relapse. Now what do you mean by retention? So retention it is defined as maintaining the newly moved teeth in position long enough to aid in stabilizing their correction and this definition it is given by Muir. Now what you have done is there was malocclusion which was present so you have corrected it orthodontically. Now what you have done is now you have moved the teeth. So because of that this retention is given so that you are maintaining that newly moved teeth in proper position and it should be long enough to aid in stabilizing their correction such that now when you are giving the retainers so that becomes your retention so you get that retention with the help of that retainers so when you remove that retainer so you should see that now they are like strong enough to stabilize their correction like when you're removing your retainers it shouldn't be like there is again relapse which is going to occur so this retention is nothing but you're maintaining that like teeth in proper position and such that they should be like stabilized properly 
So now what are the various needs of retention? First is gingival and the periodontal tissues, they require time post-treatment to reorganize. Now we have seen in the causes of relapse, first one was your periodontal ligament traction. So that was the main cause of relapse because now your tissues, they require time to reorganize. Now we have seen gingival tissue, they require 40 weeks and periodontal tissues, they require around four weeks to reorganize. So now till your tissues, it gets properly reorganized, you have to give this retention. Now the next need is soft tissue pressures, they are likely to cause relapse. Now we have seen that various like if there is any muscular imbalance which is present. So in that case also you need to give retention. And the next is the post like growth post treatment may cause relapse. Now we have seen again in the causes of relapse the growth related factors. So you have to see that like if the patient is in active phase. If, if the patient is in active growth phase, you have to see that whenever you're giving the retention, so you should give the retention till the active growth phase is completed. So these are the various needs of retention. Now there were various philosophies which were given to explain about the post-treatment stability and they are referred to as the schools of retention. So basically there are four schools of retention. First one is the occlusal school and this school of retention is given by Kingsley. So according to Kingsley, proper occlusion, it is a key factor in determining the stability of the newly moved teeth. So he said that there should be proper occlusion at the end of your orthodontic treatment. So there should be good intercuspation of the upper and the lower teeth to like stabilize the newly moved teeth. Now the next school of retention is the apical base school and this like school of retention is given by Alex Lundstrom in 1920s. So he suggested that the apical base it is an important factor in the correction of the malocclusion and in the maintenance of the stability of the treated teeth. So he said that the apical base is an important factor that is your skeletal base. And there was one more author that was McWilly. So he added that the intercanine and the intermolar width they should be maintained during the orthodontic therapy to minimize the problem so he said that the distance between the canine and the distance between the molar it should be maintained during your orthodontic treatment if you want to minimize the problems now the third school of retention is the mandibular incisal school so this like school of retention it was, it was given by greaves and twill so greaves and twits it's a, they suggested that the post treatment stability it was increased when your mandibular incisors they were placed upright or they were slightly retroclined over your basal bone so you have to see that whenever the like orthodontic therapy is going to end so your mandibular incisors they should be upright or they should be slightly retroclined to maintain that proper overjet and overbite now the fourth school of retention is the musculature school so now according to rogers functional muscle balance is necessary in order to ensure the post treatment stability now we have seen in the causes of relapse that if the imbalance is caused in the muscles as your teeth they are enclosed or they are encapsulated all over by the muscles so this becomes a very important school of retention that the muscles they should be in proper so there should be like proper muscular balance if you want that proper post treatment stability so these are the various schools of retention now, what are the theorems of retention or the theories of retention? So, in this, there are 10 theorems. So, the 9 theorems, they are given by Riddell and the 10th theorem, it was added by Moyers. So, the first theorem, it says that the teeth, they have been moved. They are tend to return to their former position because now already we have seen like your periodontal ligament fibers, your gingival fibers, they require time to reorganize. So, there are chances like if you don't give retainers, so there are chances that your teeth, it will go back to their former position. So, this is the first like theorem that the teeth, they tend to return to their former position. So, because of that, you have to give the retainers accordingly. Now, the second theorem is the elimination of the cause of malocclusion, it will prevent relapse. Now, again, we have seen in the causes of relapse that if the etiology, it is persistent. So, because of that, there will be relapse. So, you have to see that the cause of your malocclusion, it should be eliminated properly. Now, the third theorem, it says that the malocclusion, it should be overcorrected as a safety measure. Now, in this, many orthodontists, they recommend overcorrection so as to give leeway for certain amount of relapse. So, in this, now the third theorem, so your malocclusion, it can be like overcorrected to a certain amount. Now, this overcorrection, it can be done in the case of class 2, class 3 malocclusions or in the case of rotation. So, this becomes your third theorem. Now the fourth theorem is proper occlusion it is a potent factor in holding the teeth in their corrected position now we have seen in the schools of retention that the occlusion is a very important factor in stabilizing the corrected like treatment so that becomes your fourth theorem that proper occlusion it is a very important factor now the fifth theorem is bone which is adjacent to the tissue it must be allowed time to reorganize around the newly positioned teeth now we have seen like in the 
causes of relapse so now the teeth which are moved so around the teeth there is formation of a lightly calcified osteoid bone now that osteoid bone it is not going to stabilize the teeth properly and because of that there are chances that it will relapse so now you have to give time to the bone which is adjacent that newly moved teeth to reorganize properly so that becomes your fifth theorem now the sixth theorem is if the lower incisors they are based upright over the basal bone they are more likely to remain in the good alignment so that again becomes your school of retention that your mandibular incisors they should be placed upright or slightly retroclined to maintain that proper overjet and overbite now what is the eighth theorem or seventh theorem so the seventh theorem is the correction which are carried out during the periods of growth they are likely they are less likely to relapse now in this the orthodontic therapy it should be initiated at the earliest possible age so as to like prevent the chances of relapse so in this that becomes your seventh theorem that the correction it should be carried out during the periods of growth now the eighth theorem is the farther the teeth have been moved the lesser is the risk of relapse so in this now there are less chances of the teeth to return back to their normal position so because of that now this is done to a certain amount that you are moving the teeth farther and because of that there are lesser chances of relapse so that becomes your eighth theorem now the ninth theorem is the arch form particularly in the mandibular arch it cannot be permanently altered by the appliance therapy now in this the alteration of the existing arch form it results in the increased risk of like relapse so because in this because of this macquelly he also said that like the intercanine and the intermolar like the distance it should be maintained during the like orthodontic treatment because now in this the arch form it cannot be permanently altered so that becomes your ninth theorem now the 10th theorem is many treated malocclusion they require permanent retaining device and this theorem it was added by moyers so there are various malocclusion a severely malocclusions so in that case you have to give permanent retainer so that becomes all theorems of retentions now what are the types of retention so basically there are three types of retention that is no retention short term retention or a prolonged or a permanent retention the first one is the natural or the no retention the cases in which you do not require to give the patient that retainers so that means the no retention so the condition that do not require retentions are if there is anterior cross bite so if there is cross bite anteriorly so in that case you do not require to give that retainer so if there are any serial extraction procedures so in that case also it's okay if you don't give that retainers because now in this like scenarios the teeth they are stabilized already now the third condition is if there are posterior cross bite in the patient who are having steep cusp and the fourth condition is highly placed canines in the class 1 extraction cases so if there's a class 1 extraction cases in which the canines they are highly placed so these are the various condition in which you do not require that retention now the next type is the limited or the short term retention now this short term retention is when you are giving the retainers for a short period of time so it can be few weeks so you are giving the retainers to the patient for few weeks to months so in this most cases which are routinely treated they fall in this category that is your short term retention that you are giving retention to most of the patient short term so the retention it is given to allow the bone and the pedial tissue to adapt in their new position so the condition which lie in the short term retention are the class 1 class 2 condition which are treated by extraction deep bites and the next condition is when there is class 1 which is a non extraction case but in that case you will see that there is proclination and spacing which is present so in that case now you are treating all this like condition and after that you are giving a short term retention and the third type is the prolonged or the permanent retention now in this you are giving the patient a permanent retainer now again about this permanent and the temporary retainers i have explained in the video of retainers so the cases which require this permanent retention are midline diastema so if there is a midline diastema which is present so in that case you have to give this permanent retainer to the patient to prevent the relapse so basically you are giving this permanent retainer because the cases of malocclusion they are severe and there are chances very high chances that the cases it will relapse so because so to prevent that relapse you are giving this permanent retainers now the next condition is if there are severe rotation and you have corrected that severe rotation so in that case also again you have to give permanent retainers to prevent again the relapse of this the third condition is if there is arch expansion which is achieved without ensuring a good occlusion 
and the fourth is the certain class to division to deep bite cases in that also you have to give permanent retention then the patient with abnormal musculature or the tongue habits so if the patient they have abnormal muscular habits so now again we have seen in the causes of relapse that if there is muscular imbalance so it will lead to relapse so if the patient they are having abnormal musculature or the tongue habits so in that case you have to give permanent retention so as to prevent that relapse and the next case is if there is expanded arches in the cleft palate patient so again in that case you have to give permanent retention so that was all about the retention and the relapse in orthodontics i hope you found this video helpful thank you so much